Hey, Rafaela here from Hardware Sugar. Today we have a very interesting review product. It is the Acer XZ350CU 35-inch ultra-wide gaming monitor at 144 hertz. That's really, again, a mouthful. So we're just gonna call it the Acer 35-inch freaking amazingly awesome widescreen gaming monitor. Here, there's some things that we want to talk about today because we noticed that a lot of people in the market don't have an ultra wide screen monitor. And before we get into the fact that it's a gaming monitor, first and foremost, it is first an ultra wide monitor. And there are many things you can do here for your homework, for your office. We actually sell these kind of monitors and the large monitors to lawyers and accountants in, in firms precisely because it makes their job easier. Secondly, as a gaming device, it's crazy. So actually, I have two products out here for you right now. Both of them are ultra-wide monitors. One is made by Samsung and another one is made by Acer. Both 35 inch, all ultra-wide. However, the hertz rate on my Samsung over here on the left is at 60 and the 144 hertz rate here is on the Acer. But really, can you tell the difference? So this is going to be a review for the pragmatic gamer, the gamer who doesn't want to spend for everything yet wants to be able to game, but wants to be productive enough in order to accomplish everyday tasks. Because come on, right? It's expensive to be a full-time all the way gamer. But at the same time, why can't you hit two birds with one stone? A rig that makes you efficient in both levels. All right, so uh, let me begin first by showing you the installation because really you think that it's all fun and games, but really uh, sometimes I, I hit my head when trying to put in the wires and it makes all the difference for me. If you're gonna spend this much money, you should have fun installing it. So first and foremost, let me show you our Acer product here. This is the ultra wide gaming monitor we're reviewing today. The problem is that it's very difficult to install because it's really poor wire management. The actual ports in order to you know, to plug this in is actually over here at the bottom. And you really can't feel where it is because it's really indented underneath somewhere. And the only way for you to actually plug in the monitor is for you to put it on its side. And this is a really heavy monitor. It's my workout for the week, you know. See, you have to put in the wire. It's actually a two-man job, really, if you think about it, if you want to install this monitor. And then if you lose, and if you just break it, oh, yeah, that's the end all. We don't have enough money to do a crash course um, kind of video. Uh, so that's my major complaint with the wiring here. These other slots here, these are just USB ports or USB ports and not a lot of help because they're at the back. Now, if you look at our Samsung 35-inch monitor here, although it's not a gaming monitor, it gets the job done for being very practical. Here's the power supply, here's the HDMI, and all the other important monitor ports that you need for the, to connect it to your CPU. Again, although it's not a gaming monitor, it's really easy, and it has great cable management. You just put in the wires over here, snake it in, hide it in there, and then, put the, and then hide the cables back by lifting it back up. Although it's expensive, it doesn't, it's not very insulation friendly and there's a lot of trouble to put it on its backside and then plugging in the wires manually. And I'm just warning you here, uh, that part is a bit difficult unlike other widescreen monitors. So, I know lots of people love having all sorts of lights and gizmos going around in your gaming rig or your monitor, and I know that Republic of Gamers has this really awesome Predator logo thing here placed with the red lights. Maybe to each your own, but I don't like it. Because sometimes, especially when you're my age, when you're 30, you need to like do formal things like Excel files, uh, well, if you're a lawyer, you do you write pleadings, and it's a little bit distracting to have a lot of lights going on. It's also sort of like it's courting you. It's courting you. Come on, play a game, game. You know, uh, don't don't do your Excel file now. You know, sometimes you don't want that temptation, and there is no way to shut off this blue light here. Okay. The only other remedy is you could, I guess, tape a piece of uh, paper there that's been highlighted black, and that will sh that will block it out. But I really don't like uh, the fact that Acer does not give you option to turn off the light altogether. Just something to keep in mind. But for all those kiddies who love all their 
their cool stuff. It's pretty cool. So in addition to gaming, the benefit of having an ultra-wide screen monitor, especially a 35-inch one, is that it allows you to do so many things with multitasking. Like, lots of people don't know that you can actually arrange monitors, you can arrange programs, so that they display several things at the same time. And you can just move from one side to the other. It's like magic of some sort. Speaking from experience as a lawyer, we need to check and recheck other things before we add to it. So it actually just makes you overall productive. So getting a 35-inch ultra-wide monitor will allow you to save on having to buy two monitors or a second monitor and just having one massive monitor instead for everything. It also makes your desk look a lot neater. However, we also actually advocate buying two monitors I personally multitask using an ultra-wide and a standard 25-inch monitor because I really like having a lot of space and I just put it side by side. Although this is not strictly a gaming-only benefit, buying an ultra-wide monitor helps you out in everything as well. So right now we're gonna, we're gonna do a playthrough with PUBG. Actually right now as you can see, we're pushing up at 169 frames per second up to 173. It seems to be averaging between 130 to uh, 180, uh, and that's just in the airplane. So let's dive in deeper while we're, while we're actually shooting some people. So right now, as you can see, uh, first per uh, first person PUBG, it's at uh, 120. We're pushing 120, 120 right now. So I'm just take a shot at me. Oh, there we go. All right, Boom. here we go. Game time. Yeah, I got him. All right, there we go. So at 100 frames per second even with an intense battlefield area going around, that's actually pretty good. All right now we're playing Dota 2 and uh, at the initial start without any clashes, we're pushing at 215 frames per second, uh, averaging between 180 and 200. And I'm, I just have to say that it's a really different kind of game playing with this, this amount of uh, frame change. Uh, you can really feel it. And color gamut, it's really, really freaking clear. I love it. Colors just pop in right there. Uh, I'm actually more of a first person shooter player, but I would play an RTS or a MOBA game just so I could experience this kind of play. So, right now we're playing COD, uh, the latest COD, and we are. We're actually pushing around a from 80 to 140 frames per second. When it gets really tight, it can drop down to 85. Overall, it still seems very reactive. However, the graphics right now on this is mid-range. So it's not all the way top high graphics like when I was playing PUBG. All right, now we're playing Battlefield 1, one of my favorite games. Uh, by the way, Battlefield 5 is coming out. Uh, right now, we're pushing an average of 140 frames per second. You notice the difference in smoothness in Battlefield 1 being a lot more smooth than Call of Duty. Mostly because Battlefield 1 is a older game, but still, the visuals are absolutely breathtaking. And it's so smooth. I'm definitely going to be really happy playing this game. Uh, playing Battlefield 1 with this monitor, it's it's just it's just so smooth. So in conclusion, number one, this monitor is really affordable at 37,500 pesos. You won't get this kind of pricing for any other monitor on the market in the Philippines right now. With that degree of space, gamingness of the frames per second, and its color, it's really a steal. Number two, our problems though are the, the wiring system could be a lot better. I don't like having to reach in put my head underneath the bottom to put it in but after you've solved that after you've installed it there's really not much you need to worry about afterwards number three is the light the blue light is permanent unfortunately again you can cover it up but i don't like it because the company wants to tempt you to play and sometimes you just need to also do work number four the frames per second for the games we played in, as you can see, were brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And the rig we're actually using right now is, as I mentioned, just a 
medium to high end gaming rig which was constructed two years ago. Usually for monitor uh, with a large refresh rate, you need to have a gaming rig that also supports the technicalities of it. But as you can see, we had no problem with it. So if your rig, which you built a couple of years ago, is within the middle to high range, you're not gonna have any problem at all with this monitor. Just buy it and then put it in there and don't worry about your hardware backing it up. You are going to feel the difference. And number five, the color. The color of the games, the gaming environment we saw, even my wallpaper. Sometimes I just stare at it and I can't, I can't not look at it. It really just pops. There it is. This is our review of the Acer 35-inch ultra-wide gaming monitor running at 144 hertz. Only here at Hardware Sugar. Again, I am Rafael, and I'll see you in our next unboxing or review.